I want to bring in now my legal panel, Avery Friedman, a civil rights attorney and law professor and criminal defense attorney, Richard Herman. Uh, good to see you both. All right. So, um, boy, so, so Avery, you know, there have been uh, thousands of summons for, you know, jury selection. And, um, you know, this, this is one of those highly publicized cases. So uh, is this going to be very difficult to even seat an impartial jury? Is this a, you know, change of venue kind of case in the making? Well, that, that's what the defense lawyers are, are saying, and they're basing it on pre-trial publicity. Well, the fact is that people living in the suburbs of Dallas or living in the central city of Dallas are all reading the Dallas Morning News. They're listening to the same social media. This is not about pre-trial publicity for change of venue. This is about race. The, the prosecutors want to keep it in Dallas. Defense lawyers want to get it out of there. And the shame of that is that um, it's going to be a battle. 4,000 summonses, as you mentioned, thousands of them. This makes, you know, the jury selection of Manafort look like small claims. It is a very serious case. Judge uh, Tammy Kemp it really has her hands full in this. And you know what? It's going to take this entire week, if not more, to make that jury selection and do it right. So, 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 Richard, a, a charge of murder, I mean, usually with murder is associated intent, trying to prove intent. And you listen to the call and, and she is saying, you know, she thought she, you know, she mistook. You know, she, she went in the wrong apartment and, and she thought maybe this was in, an intruder. So does this charge fit the circumstances, what, uh, what appear to be the circumstances of this crime? I think it does, Fred. And, you know, in law, we punish for the mental state of mind, the mens rea, we call it. And here, a murder charge requires a specific intent to kill someone. Mm -hmm. Now, the defense is throwing up, I was, I was disoriented, I was confused, and that goes to mitigation, and that goes to try to diminish that content mm -hmm. for a manslaughter conviction or something less than murder. But the government and the prosecution here are saying, listen, that's not going to fly here. She basically was a civilian at the time, not, a, not during right. police activities. She broke into this guy's apartment, and she shot and killed him. Now, that's their position. That's what the prosecution is going to say. Strong case for the government here, very strong. And mm -hmm. the problem and the Achilles heel for the defendant is this. This gentleman had a bright red carpet at the front door of his house so his friends knew his apartment. And those front right. doors lock automatically in that complex. So there's something more to this, Fred. Mm -hmm. There's something more to it. But under these circumstances, I don't believe her defense, mm -hmm. her phone call, I don't think it's going to be sufficient. They catch you lying. A defendant gets caught lying. The jury crushes them. Mm -hmm. Government witness, they can get caught lying. Still okay. A defendant lies. It's mm -hmm. over. And I think this particular person is going to get we'll convicted see. of murder. So, so, Avery, because somehow this defendant has to establish how, okay, it's one thing that all the doors look the same, but... Right. Entry into all the doors is not the same. So how did she enter what turned out not to be her apartment to then be in the apartment to think that that was hers? Well, it's, it's really a bizarre explanation because essentially what the defense is saying is, well, you know, one apartment looks like all the rest. Number one, the door was ajar. Number two, Mr. John was actually watching Thursday Night Football. It was his home. Number three, there was a difference different in the once entrance. you go in the apartment. I mean, if the door looks exactly. the same, once you go inside, you know whether you are in familiar territory or not. Well, the other part, too, was that this wasn't an instant, she didn't pull a gun and shoot him. There was discussion, that there were remarks being made. Mm -hmm. And so the issue of intent actually is critical here. I don't know how the defense gets out of that, other than counting on the fact of trying to get this case out of the city of Dallas, getting it out to the suburbs where they think there'll be a less diverse jury, and somehow they'll be able to deal with employing considerations mm -hmm. of race in beating this case. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to beat it. Richard, why are you shaking your head? Fred, it's, it's, it's another instance of an unarmed black man being shot by a white police officer. And that is going to resonate with the jury. It just happens to be the I circumstances agree. here. But her defense, and, and that's the only defense she has, so that's why they're going to have to very, you know, it's going to rely on it. And I, was, mm -hmm. so, I didn't know and look at my phone call and mitigation. I didn't mean to do it. I was confused. But, you know, Fred, to get to intent, you can also do it by depraved indifference. And that's here, right. when you fire a, fi a firearm in the dark in, some, in an apartment and you're a trained police officer, it's, 
is a lot of trouble here for the defense in this case, Fred. And unless mm. you get a, you know, a racist jury here, I really think that uh, there's going to be sufficient on. evidence right. and mm. credible evidence to convict for murder. Yeah. yeah. That's a really troublesome case. All right, Richard Herman, Avery Freeman, always good to see you both. Take care. Thank hey, you. Fred.